you said that this isn't a boycott. You're just not showing up. What's the mm -hmm. difference? Well, basically, again, we, we want to do things in a positive way. Uh, we're just basically trying to send a message to the different bureaucrats that help design these federal provincial tables, or in this case, the Council of the Federation, uh, the Intergovernmental Affairs team, uh, to show more respect for the Indigenous governments of Canada, ind Indigenous nations. Um, and I think it's a prep meeting. You know, they're meeting for four hours today. The main Council of Federation meeting begins tomorrow. And throughout this past year, it's been demonstrated that they were trying to exclude or limit our participation in various federal provincial government tables. And we're saying, that's just not acceptable in 2017. You know, it, it just isn't, especially in the spirit of reconciliation, especially with the 94 calls to action of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, especially in light of all the words from the federal government about nation to nation. Uh, we need the premiers to keep up with those statements. Well, you say you want to be shown respect. Was this mm -hmm. a sign of disrespect? Well, in the sense that it happened so rapidly in terms of the correspondent letters back and forth, back and forth. Um, again, uh, we just want to make sure that going forward, that we have our full involvement in all federal government, pr federal prov table, intergovernmental affairs tables. You know, whether you're talking about the environment, the economy, um, or even the health accord, or, or education. Like, we need to be there. And uh, Mr. Chartier, how many of these meetings have you attended? I've attended uh, the last 13, basically since 2004. 13. And so why on the 14th meeting uh, you've decided not to go? Why now? Now because we have a process with the federal government, with the prime minister. After all these years of particularly my calling for having intergovernmental meetings, having us at the table as representatives in terms of the Métis Nation of our government, not as you know special interest groups. And so we have a process over the past year and a half with the federal government, which is exactly doing that. They are recognizing us, and we are moving forward on a nation-to-nation, -nation, government to government basis. Now, the provinces are not yet there. And so they sent an invitation. We didn't accept the invitation. So we're not boycotting anything. It's just we didn't accept an invitation mm -hmm. to go to this particular meeting. And we have not had an exchange of letters, and we hope that based on those letters that at some point we will sit down and we will talk about this in a you know in a face-to-face -face way where mm -hmm. either you know they respect us as one of the three orders of government in this country or they don't but, but but some of the issues some of the things that have changed dramatically over the last year year and a half Rachel Notley mentioned how the truth and reconciliation recommendations coming out of the Commission that would have been discussed had the three of you been there well in that case I probably wouldn't go because of that, because the Truth and Reconciliation Commission excludes the Métis Nation, excludes mm -hmm. Métis residential schools. It's the last place I'd want to be to discuss something that doesn't you know, affect me, in fact, excludes us. And I hate to say this, but the more success there is on the TRC calls for action, you know, the more it hurts the Métis Nation and mm -hmm. its citizens. Mr. Obed, what do you make of the fact that two other Indigenous organizations, the Congress of Aboriginal Peoples, the Native Women's Association of Canada, disagree with your position? They've decided to go. In Canada, there has been a long history of divide and conquer. And the federal government has led uh, a lot of the discussion about who represents whom in the Indigenous communities. And provinces and territories are now uh, carrying on uh, that sort of discussion about who can be in and who can be out based on their criteria and who they would like to see. But for Inuit, it's clear. Uh, Inuit Tapri Kanatami is uh, the representational organization for Canadian Inuit. Right, but, but I guess the point being that, that those two other organizations saw something worth pursuing at this meeting, that the three of you did not, given, given the balance, given the trade-off. And so is, I suppose the question is, is, is some kind of meeting better than no meeting at all? We've been working in intergovernmental processes over the last two years with this new government. And time and time again, provinces and territories have put roadblocks in the way of Indigenous participation, whether it be at first minister's meetings, at um, ministerial level meetings, or within the senior officials level processes. We're just not in that space anymore. We are in a new space of reconciliation and respect for our rights as indig Indigenous peoples and rights for self-determination. Uh, the challenge now is to try to ensure that provinces and territories can accept and incorporate uh, 
the United Nations Declaration, the, the Canadian Constitution, into the way in which they work with Indigenous peoples.